Seven Star Infernip is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we are going to cover all of the raid details as well as the best builds to help you easily solo it in game. Before we jump into today's best Pokemon build, let's first take a look at what we can expect to see from Infernip in battle so we have an easier time taking it down. Running over this weekend as of recording this video from the 4th until the 6th of October and returning for its second time out from the 11th until the 13th. Infernip will have a rock terror typing with the moves Sky Blitz, Aura Sphere, Terra Blast, Grass Knot. Additional moves are going to be Nasty Plot, Sword Stance and Focus Energy. Of course it has got the Mightiest Mark, can never be shiny and it will have a naughty nature, can only be caught once per save file. Now the raid interactions will cover as we get into the builds but a brief overview, 95% of the raid timer is going to steal some of your Terra Orb charge so it's going to mean you're going to have to take an extra turn to attack in the raid. It will reset your stats on 90% of the raid timer and after that, you're going to be able to boost all your attacks and not worry about that happening again. Shield activation on either 80% of HP remaining or 80% of the time remaining. And it will also reset any drops it's had on 80% of the time remaining as well. 79% of the time it will use a nasty plot. So after that shield goes up, nasty plot's going to happen. And then in 50% it will use a sword stance. And on 35% it will use a focus energy as well. You're going to get the same sort of drops as well as we normally see with 7 star terror raids including those array of Herba Mystica. Like I say, this is the Inferno running over two weekends. First one this weekend from the 4th until the 6th and then from the 11th until the 13th. And in case you're new to this, to access this event in game, make sure you are connected to the internet, open your menu, head into the Poker Portal and down to the Mystery Gift section. Once here, choose the option to check Poker Portal news. When this is finished updating, exit out and open your map to find the 7 star Terror Raid Den. So the builds that we're going to feature in today's video, the first one's going to be Annihilate. Of course, all the builds will be down in the description below if you want to take a look at them after the video. We'll be level 100 and hyper trained, fighting terror type, skull plans as the held item with a moveset of focus energy, screech, bulk up and drain punch, defiant the ability here and an EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and attack with the remainder put into special defense and an adamant nature. Another suggestion for this video is going to be Iron Hands. It is going to have the fighting terror type. Again, the scope lens is the held item and the moveset here is going to be Iron Defense, Belly Drum, Focus Energy and Drain Punch with the EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and 252 EVs in special defense with the remainder in attack and an adamant nature. So they are the two builds I'd recommend for this. We'll jump in first and I'll show you the Annihilate. Now, unlike previous seven star Terror Raid Pokemon, we don't see a turn zero with Infernip. What we're gonna do on turn one, go straight into the battle and lock in with a focus energy. Now, if you do have an Intimidate user on your side of the field, it definitely does help. It's not necessary. You can do this without an Intimidate user. But like I say, it does make the setup a little bit easier. Turn two, we're going to lock in with the Drain Punch on 95% of the raid timer. Infernip's going to steal some of that Terra Orb charge. So that's going to mean that we have to take an extra turn before we can Terrestrialize. So the quicker we can get to that point where we can do extra damage, the better it will be for closing this raid out. And the big thing that we're looking out for early on in this raid as well, outside of that Terra Orb charge being stolen, is the message where it resets our stats and abilities on our side of the field. So turn three, again, just looking with the Drain Punch. We're doing pretty good damage as we go. We do get lucky with the Paralysis from the Belly Bolt, and it is going to set up a shield pretty early on in the raid as well. So we're looking for the time where it does reset those stats and abilities. Once it's done that, like we're seeing here, we're free to start setting up. And this turn, we're going to go for a bulk up so we can take those attacks a lot better going forward. And we're also going to be expediting our attack stat as well at the same time. So initially here, we want to get two bulk ups off before we go for any further attacks. So we're going to take a Blair Blitz for our trouble. You can see that the Intimidate is helping mitigate the damage there. But the bulk ups will also be playing its role if you haven't got the Intimidator. So a second bulk up here after that shield and our stats have been reset. And then we can go for those Drain Punches until we can Terrestrialize. And the damage with that critical hit ratio as well going to be doing a lot more damage so that's the big thing that we're looking out for in this raid and we're going to just lock in now with that brain punch now we've got that plus two attack plus two defense on the field and in the process we can see the infinite reduce any attack drops that it's had from its side of the field from those intimidates so we take a little bit more damage here from that flare blitz we'll lock in with the drain punch once again we're not doing too much damage because we're not terrestrialized at the moment 
We'll still land those critical hits and all importantly getting that health back, which is keeping us in the raid until we can trust lies. So we have to go for another drain punch. It is going to go for a nasty plot as well at some stage through the raid. So you have to keep an eye on that because its special attacks will be hitting a lot harder. One more drain punch. And after this, we will be able to trust lies. So we're going to take another flare blitz for our trouble. But like I say, with those those bulk ups under our belt now we will be able to manage those a little bit better in this raid and although the, the annihilate is a little bit slower than the iron hands i would say it's probably a lot more consistent in this raid once you do get this initial setup done and you're in a good spot to terrestrialize and do some big damage and you can see the raid timer is not in a bad position here so we're in a really safe spot where we can terrestrialize get some big damage off and start making some good work on this annihilate terrestrialize now we will be able to do a lot more damage with these drain punches now they're boosted by that terrestrialization of course and there you can see what we're going to do as well now we're in a much healthier position is go for another bulk up after this turn and then that puts us to plus three and it just means that the end of this raid is going to be a lot quicker to close down so you can choose to go for two bulk ups yeah or just the one like we are but i kind of just think the one extra one here just gives us a little bit of an edge and um, from testing just to get that extra damage to close the raid up a little bit quicker and we can take attacks a little bit better as well the big problem i'd say here is the rng is always going to catch you out in some some shape way or form because it will go for a focus energy at some point in the raid we'll go for a sword stance and if it does land a critical hit, it's going to ignore those bulk up boosts that we've got on our side of the field, which is always going to be a problem. So you can you kind of be subjected to a critical hit where it does knock you out. But most of the time, you'll be in a good position where you're just going to be able to spam the drain punch and close the raid out. This next one should get rid of the shield and then one more after that or two more after that might be enough to close it out. But it is very straightforward. You just follow the steps that we've taken in this video to get through get the setup done and uh, then you can just spam the drain punch and close this one up and like i say great time at 50 percent we're still in a very good position and even the aurora sphere with that plus two still not any closer to being able to pick up a big knockout with a critical hit so we're kind of fine in this situation but this drain punch should be enough the paralysis definitely does help uh, and the drain punch just missing the knockout here so we'll have to take one more attack for our trouble and there's the last drain punch just below 50% health of the raid timer and it is as easy as that to do with this annihilate so turn one with the iron hands we're going to lock in with a focus energy like we did with the annihilate to start this raid off we'll take an attack for our trouble we'll get that customary boost to our defenses as well with the focus energy going to boost our critical hit rates and with that scope lens just meaning that every time we land a drain punch it's going to land a critical hit as well so there's another flare blitz coming out but we're in no danger of getting knocked out. And every time we do land this drain punch, we're going to pretty much recover all of the health that we do to the infernit throughout this battle. So we'll be in that good stage. We're just waiting on the two things activating when it steals our terror orb charge and 95% of the raid timer, which is now. And then when it resets our stat drops and abilities on our side of the field. Once that happens, we're going to be able to start setting up in this raid. Of course, again, if you do have an intimidator on your side of the field, is going to really help you out in this raid if you don't it's not mandatory we haven't got one here we're still going to be able to execute this plan off pretty seamlessly in this raid if you've got an all bolivia on your side of the field it can cause a few issues because it is boosting the grass knot on uh, from the inferno so it will be doing a little bit more damage later in the raid when it has nasty plotted can be a bit of an issue so when it does nullify our stats on our side of the field like we're seeing here we're in a good healthy position and we can go for a belly drum now so we're going to see a grass not come up from the inferno not do very much damage at all because of that special defense bulk that we've got in the investment and we do take that half hp for the cost of plus six in our attack stat then we're going to lock in with a drain punch you can there go for an iron defense if you're in a really precarious position but i think if you're full health we're in a fine position just to go for the belly drum there to get it set up because for the rest of the raid it's not going to nullify our stats and once we can terrestrialize we're going to be able to really make some big headway and get through this raid very very quickly with the iron hands so we're going to see another grass not come out but we've got one more drain punch and i think we can terrestrialize the next turn and if we can we're going to be able to do some significant damage after that point so now the infinite is going to go for a nasty plot at some point throughout the raid as well that's going to boost its special attack by one stage but 
by two stages, but we can terrestrialize now, and that's exactly what we're going to do and lock in with that drain punch. And from this point on, it's pretty quick. So you just need that initial setup. You just need the opening, get the belly drum off, and then you're going to be good to go to close this one up. We do see another grass knot come out from the Inferno. That's fine. But like I say, you don't necessarily need an Intimidate user on your side of the field. And even if there is an Arb Olivia on your party in Pokemon, the damage isn't going to be enough to pick up the knockout against you. It just makes it a little bit awkward where you have to be a bit more careful with the grassy terrain on the field. But that's not anything to really worry about. It's the big focus energy sword stance play that the Inferno goes for. It can cause a few issues. But the general bulk that the Iron Hands has got, you're going to be fine for the rest of the raid. And you can see this plus two grass knock here still not really doing too much damage to us here. Even though Iron Hands is very heavy. And with these drain punches, we're able to make some big waves in this raid and uh, there's the shield broken one more drain punch will be enough there's the focus energy coming out from the infinite but we will be able to close this one up very quickly and that is how easy it can be to run through a perfect pokemon to farm for herba mystica this weekend when the raid is running if you found today's video useful please consider leaving a like and share this solo build around to help those who might be having a harder time taking seven star inferno down as always if you have your own successful solo builds drop them in the comments below to help the community slay this mightiest mock pokemon and if you're not subscribed the button's down below if you want to see more of this and other pokemon content have a great rest of your day friends take care of yourselves and until next time bye bye